All right, Dave, come on in. Have a seat, man. Oh, let's do this. So Dave, you had some questions about Core. You're a real live member of our community and you're just in town for a couple of days. So first of all, welcome. Right. And let's just jump right into it. I'm doing it by the book. So okay, I'm doing by the book. By, you know, culture. That's using, good. Um, so you start with defining the brand. Right. And then you do the user uh, personas or profiles, yeah. right? Yeah. And that makes sense to you. So the fear that I'm hearing from you, and I think Jose feels this way too. Yeah. He wants to make sure that you're true to who you are as opposed to tailoring your company to the customer. Right. And I like to do it differently. I personally like to build the user profiles first to get to understand who they are before doing the brand. And I'll tell you why. The number one thing I can tell you to do is just do it the way that you're comfortable doing it. That's key because you have to be comfortable, otherwise the people in the room will pick up on your attention and your uncertainty, and then you'll start to lose credibility. The reason why I like to do the user profiles first is because of this idea called design thinking. Mm -hmm. Design thinking says instead of building a product or a company or an organization and then marketing it to somebody, let's understand who people are, what their problems are, and solve a person's problem. Mm -hmm. And I read a quote earlier today in, on LinkedIn or Facebook, it said something like this, and it said, instead of raising your kid and asking them, what do you wanna be when you grow up? Or what do you wanna do when you grow up? Ask them, what problems do you want to solve? And by asking them that question, they're actually trying to identify a problem that somebody has mm -hmm. and work towards that, and then it'll, they'll self-select what they need to study to be able to solve that problem. Mm -hmm. If you're talking to a company that needs your services and your help, chances are they're, they're going through a transitionary period. Either they want to grow, maybe they're in a period where their sales are declining or their user base is growing too old or leaving them. And so to double down on existing strategies is really not going to help to move the needle. Let's find out more about who the users are, their jobs, their pains and their gains, and let's start to understand that. Then I find that it naturally flows really well into then defining who you are want to be as a brand. That also clears up the confusion about are we describing the brand as it exists today or the brand we'd like it to be. Mm -hmm. So that kind of opens up my mind to maybe some other possibilities of tweaking the existing core as it is. Yes, so it's dangerous to try to tweak something before you actually learn the basic principles. Right. My recommendation for anybody doing anything new is try to follow the way the instructor, your teacher, your master teaches you how to do it. Mm -hmm. And then as soon as you have, have a grasp on it, start to evolve it into something that works for you. And Jose has done this before. He's made the metaphor of core as being a martial art, not mm -hmm. a specific discipline of martial art like karate or taekwondo, just as a martial art, a way of defending. Right. So if you're into a, kind of more of a confrontational style, uh, high friction as you, as you will, or you're a very dynamic big personality, that might be more akin to say karate or taekwondo. It's, it's powerful, it's fast, and it delivers results right away. But if you're like my personality, I, I like to think of myself more as a, a judo practitioner or a jujitsu person where I'm using leverage, I'm very fluid, and I'm, I'm trying to use my intellect and my leverage to kind of solve a problem. Right. And, and Aaron said this, and this was great that he had said this, what if it's more like, I just need to know something to survive in the street? So that's more like Krav Maga, where you need to learn to strike and run, yeah. gouge the eye, kick the groin, <laughs> and run, because you never know what else is gonna happen. Right. That might be something down the line like core light, but that's the idea. You should take the framework, apply it, run it a couple of times, yeah and find out what it is to do it and also to have it done to you. Yeah. That's a great part of the community is you can practice on, on core with one another mm -hmm. and see what works for you. How do you feel when somebody asks you that question or mm -hmm. maybe they skimmed over something and you wanted to go deeper. Mm -hmm. So once you know how it works on the other end, I think that'll make you better prepared, better equipped to then do it for your client. What I've done is I've encouraged the clients to go deep in the user profiles, but to go broad in, in the description of the customers. And I like to use two words, like an adjective and a noun. Okay. Like we're concerned activists, we're environmentally conscious, something like that. So I start to understand the groups. And one thing that I encourage you to do, and it's, I guess it's the, not the opposite, but it's a variation on the idea that when you're doing facilitation, you have to keep the room positive. Mm -hmm. I like to actually learn about the things that make us weak. Yeah. what we need help on because I like the contrast between the two. Right. And so it's okay to describe the brand mm. as a less desired state because it's truthful. Yeah. 
And the thing that you want to do as a facilitator is you want to give voice to the people in the room. So oftentimes the, the marginalized person, usually they're new hires or they're very junior, uh, they're young, and so they have all these new ideas and their ideas are really good because mm -hmm. they're not bought into the whole system yet. But oftentimes during meetings they're kind of marginalized or discredited. So I think you as a facilitator, if they say, you know, I hear what everybody's saying, but I don't think our brand is like that. Our brand is, um, ex uh, it's too exclusive. Mm -hmm. And nobody wants to say that, but that's the truth. Mm -hmm. So I think as a person who's facilitating, you should capture that first of all. Right. Write down, ex we're, we're too exclusive. And then ask why, why do you say that? Yeah. Or what's a preferred way? And so you start to bridge from something that's negative to having a deeper understanding and then to pivot out of that. Right. And you want to capture all of that. Now, you may ask yourself, well, none of this will make it into the brand statement because usually they're only the best words that we mm -hmm. pick and configure. Mm -hmm. That's totally true. But we only, we do more than just write the brand statement. We'll write messaging and we may come up with ideas for products and services that aren't part of any scope. So when you understand that the, the voice and the vibe that the company and the organization is giving out is that we're too exclusive, you might think about like a welcoming kit welcoming every new member, doing something that's more personal, like having a sign with their name on it, or giving them a little goodie bag, or something like that to make them feel more welcome. A while back, when Steve Jobs returned, he started to write about Apple, and they ran a campaign, it's, it's something like, and he would describe their products as insanely great. So another reason why you'd want to keep the negative words, quote unquote, is because you can pair them up and find this juxtaposition that really drives a very specific position yeah. and I like that because then from insanely great you can think about other ideas of messaging and you can roll out a whole campaign. I'm glad you you brought up the negative aspect because yeah. I did encounter in a couple of uh, sessions of core where you know someone would offer up a negative comment and I try to follow the core videos where uh, I think it was Jose who suggests like for the Trojan storage right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, if they give you a negative word, turn it into a positive mm -hmm. word because at the end of the day, you want you know your brand to be a positive, right? You know, have positive positive adjectives. So right. I didn't know quite what to do with that, so yeah. we kind of just left it in parentheses. Sometimes we didn't even put in the the negative right. word, but I'm glad that you said that because I think it does give a more holistic sense of who this company is. Right. right? I think as we as we look at say the latest Star Wars film, and people are saying it's a, it's a kind of a fresh take because it was the most complex uh, character like uh, Kylo Ren, right? Where he was not pure evil and he wasn't all great either. There was a mixture of the two between mm. his character and I think brands are people too if you treat them the right way. It's not some kind of shiny veneer where mm. we have our quirks mm. and, and there's people that identify with that. Right. So 80% of what we do is great, 20% of what we do I wouldn't say is negative but it's kind of quirky and a little bit uh, off center mm. and I think that's what makes it unique. Right. And gives it some sort of authenticity. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Because uh, if we're referencing something that Yo said before, which is people don't fall in love with companies, they fall in love with personalities. Mm, so cool. personality is uh, deficient if it only has one part to it. It feels actually to me disingenuous. Yeah, yeah. You're only presenting the very best. It's kind of like the way Facebook works, right? right? You don't ever talk about your bad days, you just talk about all your good days. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's some kind of very highly curated and selective version of ourselves. Right. But I think if you understand that, uh, the, the parts that aren't perfect about our company or our organization, you can speak to the people who have hung in there with you mm -hmm. to try to like bring them back. Okay. Here's, a, here's a great example. It's uh, a case study for Domino's Pizza. And so Domino's Pizza is a ginormous pizza delivery company, right? And they're not known for high quality pizza. Mm -hmm. They're known for 30 minutes or it's free. Or it's right. on us, okay? And so a while back, after hearing so much feedback that their pizza is not very good, the CEO made a decision. He said, you know what, we need to fix our pizza. And so they brought in the chefs and they, they genuinely made a better pizza. And so they had heard from the social media network that people hated their pizza. And so what they did was they tracked down some of the most vocal people who hated their pizza and their taste and they sent them a free pizza. So they no obligations, we heard you, we understand that you don't like our pizza and we've reformulated it. It's a new recipe. Give it a try. Tell us what you think, good mm -hmm. or bad. Mm -hmm. And so a few of them said it was still bad. Quite a few of them went back onto social media and said, this is a totally different pizza and mm -hmm. I love this pizza now. Yeah. And so they actually ran towards the problem, embraced it, yeah. 
instead of trying to push it away. Right. So this is where you as a facilitator, as a person who's helped them, helping your client design a better business model, yeah. if you don't listen to that, where they say our pizza's terrible, you can't say, well, wait a minute, what do we need to do to make a better pizza, you guys? Mm. Is that a priority for us? Yeah. Our product is king, isn't it? Mm. It's not just the delivery part, because everybody's delivering now. And then you solve that problem, so then you can come up with a marketing idea. Well, who hates our pizza the most? We should have built that user profile. Yeah. And we would have skipped that if we marginalized those people. In a room where there might be a cynic, there might be someone mm. who has a, a negative, uh, I don't know, posture towards the whole process, um, who might try to destroy what's going on. They, yeah. Do you have any suggestions or direction in, ter in terms of containing that so that you don't go down this narrow, right. you know, negative like, right. pitfall? There's a couple of ways to deal with that, right? The thing that I found that has worked for me so far, and if it works for you, try it, is to say to them, to the group, is before you begin, it's like, I've done this a few times, and every time I've done this, I've come to an organization and there's somebody who has a lot of institutional knowledge, and, and that's amazing that you're here in this room. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to ask you to self-identify, but you typically are, are kind of a little bit more closed off to new ways of doing things. So I'm just gonna ask you for the moment, for the next six to eight hours, to suspend disbelief. Mm -hmm. For the moment, just pretend like this is all gonna work. Yeah. And then you and I can catch up afterwards and you can tell me how it didn't work. Yeah. And I would love to get your feedback. So you're calling it out, you're being I'm calling it out. So I'm just saying that somebody in this room will do this. Right. And so they become a little more self-conscious. And even saying this, they'll still raise those things. And I'm like, oh, now I know who you are. Right. And we can have fun with it. Okay. Well, you're that guy, right? Mm -hmm. There's lots of value to you yeah. um, because this organization wouldn't be here if it didn't have somebody like you, right? right? Yeah. I'm kind of picking up a pattern where you're you're very pro, uh, like you're very transparent. I'm very you like transparent. the transparency, even I with do. the Domino's story. It's about like, well, our pizza tastes like crap, so let's fix that and let's get some true feedback. Right. And then uh, even with this, it's just to like call it out in the room and say, well, there, you know, this has been my experience, so that it's a little disarming and it's a little bit like hitting things from, you know, confronting things head on. So yeah. I like that approach. If anything, if I can encourage you to be more transparent with your thought process, yeah. uh, you endear yourself to the client. Mm, if somebody cool. comes into your life that you haven't met before and starts to tell you a little bit about the negative things about themselves or they're just, they're just totally right there in front of you, 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 don't, you, do, you don't distrust them because they tell you everything there is to know about them. If you have an agenda, I say, this is my agenda. Right. This is what I need to get out of this and I hope that you'll love me by the end, but I don't know. Yeah. And you just say that, and then they don't think you're too slick or anything, like there's some hidden agenda. Right. People having agendas is okay. Yeah. It's the fact that it's hidden. Right. And the whole domino story is really about this early or late 90s, kind of early 2000s. Uh, the social media thing hadn't been really invented yet, and so marketing, traditional marketing had still worked. So you can just rely on repeating a message over and over, and people buying into that. Mm -hmm. But now people, your tribe, your customers, they have conversations with each other all the time, independent mm -hmm. of the advertiser. Right. So this idea of you marketing to them, it's, it's not working anymore. Yeah. So to hide behind the fact that your pizza actually might not be very good, it's not gonna help you. Mm -hmm. You can't outmarket that because they'll just go, get on Instagram and say, this pizza's rubbery, yeah. the cheese feels fake, and the toppings are kind of very light. So that's really what you wanna do. Mm -hmm. you, and, and right now, there's a statement that we're in the age of the customer, we're in the age of the user. Brands need customers more than customers need brands. So if you understand that, mm -hmm. then you'll start to think differently about how to develop your products, mm -hmm. how to deliver those products to the people, and how to speak to them in a very natural way. I'm excited now, I'm kind of even as you're talking, having a few ideas of like, oh, maybe this can be bridged or maybe this can be tweaked. Um, according to my experience and my personality and how I run core. Right. Uh, so I love the, the martial arts uh, example that you give. I'm not sure where I am in that spectrum, but I'm definitely sure. not like the karate <laughs> type. I think um, only Jose is really. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, you have to have that big personality. Yeah. yeah, so I'm probably more the judo type. So I'm excited, I'm actually very pumped up to, to see where I can take core um, and make the little tweaks here and there. To yeah kind of customize it for, right. for my users as my clients. The, the, the key here is for you to walk away, to, to run core or whatever framework you're using, it doesn't matter, to have familiarity with it and start to 
adapt it to how you work and how you think in your personality and yeah. play to your strengths. Yeah. Um, Jose is a very uh, kind of a fast thinker. He can process things really quickly. So he likes the magic of the reveal. So mm -hmm. he wants to write the brand statement right in front of you. And few people I know can do that. Yeah. I, I'm more cerebral. I got to go away and I need to think and process yeah. and digest the information. <laughs> and sometimes it takes me a day or two to go and come back and say, here's what I think the brand position statement is. And I enjoy that. And so I separated that. So I don't do that in front of the client. Mm -hmm. So to each their own. And I'm glad you sounds from the sounds of it feel more empowered to do it the way you need to do it yeah so it's not a rigid system it's an open framework okay. all right thanks for joining me thanks. good to see you and guys if you have any questions um put the comments down below if you have no idea what we're talking about sorry you wasted your time <laughs> watching this video and maybe you can watch some of our other videos about how we run facilitated discovery sessions thanks for tuning in see you guys next time <laughs>